Good evening, everyone. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for our many blessings, our safe travel. Father, open our hearts, our minds, and our eyes as we bring forth this message today. Father, help us to remember that you love all your children, no matter who they may be, and that you want to see all of us in heaven, but it is our choice of what we do. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The message that come to me today, I was reading and studying, and it just suddenly hit me. And it's going to come from Matthew 24. And if you read Matthew 24, starting at verse 36, it says, However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son himself, only the Father knows. This was Jesus speaking to his disciples. That's why I titled today's message, Ready or Not, Here I Come. You stop and think, Jesus was talking to his disciples. and He's trying to explain to them at that time that the temple was going to be destroyed, that there wouldn't be one stone left on another. But the thing is, one of the disciples asked him, how are we going to know this? When, <clears throat> when will this all come to pass? And Jesus basically told him what would be happening. And he explained it. But at the same time, he wanted to remind them that you have to basically live your life moment to moment in faith. And that's one of the things. Because as it goes on in verse 37, it says, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up till the time Noah entered the ark. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them away. This is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. So many people today, they say that they're followers of God. They say that they believe in Jesus, that they're Christians. But their very lives give lie to what their lips are saying. Too many times, folks say, I'm a Christian, but the way they act, some of the things that they do, you know, it's not a Christian thing. You know, you can sit there and profess Christianity all you want, but if you're not living the actual life, then you really do have problems. The thing is, is Jesus went on and he was explaining to his disciples and everything. He goes on in verse 40 to say, two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, another will be left. Now, these two verses, verses 40 and 41, many people have taken to believe this is talking about basically, it, I'm sorry, but when, when they talk about the secret, well, my wife just whispered rapture. I, I, there was another word I was looking for, but the secret rapture that so many people seem to be believing in and have deluded themselves with. Because if you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it's, and you start basically at verse 13 and you continue to read on down, it, it will tell you, this is Paul talking to the Thessalonians about people, the Sadducees that started creeping in to tell people that there was no resurrection, no hope, this, that, and the other. But Paul's reminding them that there is hope in the resurrection. But as he goes on, he says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And then he goes on to tell, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And verse 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. Now, I'm sorry, 
for those who use 40 and 41 in Matthew chapter 24 to say secret rapture. Obviously haven't finished reading their Bibles because that's not what those two verses are talking about. They're talking about faithfulness. There'll be two men working together. One will be a faithful Christian. The other will be a man of the world. The faithful Christian will be caught up and join Jesus in the air. The other man will be dead. The same with the two women who are grinding at the mill. The faithful Christian woman will join Jesus in the air, but the other will be dead. When Jesus comes back, it's plain and simple. We will not, but you, you're going to be one of two things. You're either going to be joining Jesus in the air, whether you died in Christ, you'll be resurrected to join him. If you're still alive on earth, you will faithful, you're going to join him, but everyone else there is no seven year period to try to get it right you, the time to get it right is right now and that's what Jesus is telling him in Matthew as he goes on in verse 42 so you too must keep watch for you don't know what day your Lord is coming and understand this if the homeowner knew exactly when the burglar was coming he would have kept watch and not permit his house to be broken into Verse 44 goes on to say, You must also be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Now, that right there basically tells us that there's going to be no seven years of tribulation to try to get it left behind, theory going, and all this other stuff. When Jesus comes back, it's going to be loud. It's going to be noisy. And there is no hiding it. It, it'll, it'll make all the wars of this world put together seem like a two-year-old's birthday party. That's the thing. When Jesus comes back, everybody's going to know it. There's going to be no secret rapture. And if you're not ready, there's going to be no time to prepare because once he comes back, that's it. Those that are ready will be joining him in heaven. Those that aren't ready basically we'll be facing the second resurrection when he comes back at second time and folks when he comes back like I said it's not going to be this grace period that you think some people are preaching there is no seven years of tribulation and then you know Jesus will come back and take those that have managed to get their lives back together we need to get our lives together right now and that's one of the things as we go on with verse 45 this says a faithful, sensible servant is one whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. And then Jesus goes on to tell his disciples in verse 47, I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the master, what if the servant is evil and he thinks, my master won't be back for a while. And he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk. The master will return unannounced and unexpected. And he will cut the servant to pieces. And he will assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be much weeping and gnashing of teeth. Folks, we've got to get ready. Jesus is coming back. All the signs that we see in the world today show that Jesus is coming is nearer than we think. As you watch, prophecy is being fulfilled before your very eyes. We hear of wars, of rumors of war. You hear of everything that's going on. But so many people are still saying peace, safety. You know, that's not what the Bible is telling us. The Bible is telling us that we need to get prepared. We need to get our, basically get our lives in order right now. We need to stop. We need to put away those cherished secret sins. We need to look in the mirror and see what God sees on the inside. And is it something that God can be proud of and call good and faithful servant? Or are we harboring some sin that will keep us from joining Jesus when he comes back to get us? I don't know about you all, but yeah, there's still parts of my life I'm working on real hard trying to get straight. Everybody has problems. 
But that's one of the things. God offers us grace, mercy, and if we repent of our sins, he allows Jesus to cover us with his saving grace and the blood of his sacrifice. Don't let anyone convince you that you've got time to get it right. Don't be one of those people who basically hear somebody speaking about God and say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get it right. Uh, I'll later not right now leave me alone you know I got time we're not promised tomorrow I know two or three people right now that they think that that left behind scenario that they're seeing in these movies coming out of Hollywood is going to be true and that is Satan's lies to convince people that you get a second chance chance you get is a chance we're living right now. We need to have our minds on Jesus. We need to keep our eyes focused on the prize, and the prize is eternal life in heaven with God. God's given us grace and opportunities beyond all measure, and we need to be looking and studying our Bibles for ourselves. Don't be trusting what somebody else has said. Don't believe what I've said. I was reading from the New Living Translation. I wasn't reading the King James Version of the Bible, except when I was reading from Thessalonians. But you need to study the Bible, and you need to not just take a piece here and a piece there and make it fit whatever you makes you feel good. You need to study the Bible in its entirety and see what God has for us. Because God has a message in his word and that message is love and that he doesn't want any of us to be left behind because if we get left behind we're going to be left behind forever because we won't exist anymore it's one of those things Jesus is coming he wants us to be ready when he gets here because there will be no second chance and as I said before Jesus is coming ready or not let us end with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the message that you gave us. Father, help us to be a light and a beacon in this world that is getting darker and darker. We hear of wars, the rumors of wars, but at the same time, we also hear many who do not know you. They do not know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yet they profess to have all this biblical knowledge that they're putting out here when they don't know what they're speaking of. Father, help us to sort through your word so that we may find the truth. Do not let us just follow blindly where the world is leading, for that leads to death, where following Jesus leads to eternal life. Father, we ask that you be with those today that couldn't join us. Please reach out, touch him, help them. Father, we have friends and neighbors that are sick. Touch them with your healing hand. If it be thy will, heal them quickly. But Father, let us all remember that no matter what, you have a perfect plan. We just have to be patient and allow it to play out. Help us this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Y'all have a blessed Sabbath.